feel like I'm making these almost back to back. Today's Friday, May 7th, 2021. My name is Alex. I'm yours truly hosting another Corporate Cowboys episode. Another episode for the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Powered by Incorporating Associates. You can find us on Instagram. That's incorporating dot associates underscore IA. You get uh, subscribe to the Patreon. That's Corporate Cowboys Podcast. And uh, you can also donate. There are a bunch of links on the Instagram profile. So help us out. Keep the operation nonprofit for the foreseeable future. Um, today's, uh, this is going to be quick. These are going to be quick. Um, they're going to be quick because I'm just keeping them short, keeping them short and sweet. I started off the podcast with doing like hour, hour and a, I don't know if I ever did an hour and a half, but like something close to like an hour and just squeezing that time in, finding uh, moments when I could get away from work or during break, during lunch, I said, nah, fuck that, because a lot of it was uh, was riffing off of the top, but I feel like I could easily mentally prepare a solid 10, 15 minutes of something worthwhile. This episode is going to be about sabotage, self-sabotage to be specific. And what it takes, what it takes to uh, self-sabotage yourself. Um, obviously, the goal isn't to to find yourself underground or to find yourself dead. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna focus primarily on the first half of self-sabotage. It's my favorite, honestly. Even if it is sabotaging others, I I'm not a fan of the last of the second half because that means that. Operations come to an end. Motherfuckers struggle to find closure and, you know, cutting ties and all that dumbass bullshit. Me, I like to keep the work going. I like work to be consistent and constant, never ending, because as soon as you find yourself idle, your mind starts to wander and you think you can grift and skim off of the top a little. And you start falling into the latter half of self-sabotage and you get knocked off. So (laughs) the first half, the first half is the setup, obviously. The last half, I mean, the last half is logical. The last half is logical when you get knocked off or when you, when you pull the trigger and, and set things into motion to topple hierarchies, if you will. And I mean, knock heads off, make heads roll. But the first half, the first half is where all the fun is. The last half, like I said, it's, it's logical, it's chronological, it's, it's expected, it's almost boring. It's almost boring. The first half though, the setup, <laughs> setting yourself up, and I mean self-sabotage, the first half of self-sabotage is the best. Why? Because it's like having a death wish but at the same time, negotiating with death, like just how far you can push the envelope until death comes to collect your ass, <laughs> until, until death, the logical end, the, the logical finality, you know, steps in for that second half. <laughs> the first half is the funnest. The first half is the most fun. Why? Because it entails you um, it entails you having a plan and taking steps to set yourself up. Obviously, you want to go out at your peak, at your highest. Um, and that's not to say you will be at the highest. You will be at your highest. That's why I'm in no rush to get to the top. But every step that I take, every move that I make... Um, I'm making sure that I'm acting like a leader and I'm leading other leaders. It's like a, a 
flying V, if you will. I think that's an old movie reference. But if if I'm in the front and I should get knocked off, then the V formation necessarily um, fills itself and there's somebody else in the lead position, right? So it's just setting yourself up with a uh, organization, with a network. Man, this turned out to be pretty, pretty straightforward. I, I felt like it was going <laughs> to, I felt like it was going to become something else. But no, it's uh, pretty straightforward. It's just creating a, an association, necessarily incorporating associates who are on the same page and wavelength as you are. I know a lot of individuals, I know a lot of individuals who aren't willing to sacrifice to that extent. Because it is necessarily sacrifice. When you, when you set yourself up for self-sabotage, when you set yourself up, right? And, and when I say set yourself up, I do mean for success. You're setting yourself up for success. In this case, reaching success necessarily puts you at a level where you can stop working. And I'm not for that shit. The work never ends. That's why it's the first half of setting of <laughs> it's the first half of success. It's the first half of a successful self-sabotage. It's the work. That's what I love. It's it's getting there. It's getting to that peak. Why? Because the other side is just a fucking downhill slide. It's <laughs> it's, it's a drop into a six foot, eight foot hole <laughs> or what have you. <laughs> it's a short drop. It's a short drop, right? So... <laughs> It's necessarily, uh, it's at a higher level, you're creating a higher floor for your associates to look up to, right? If you climbed 20 feet <laughs> and fall into an eight foot hole, like where you stopped, motherfuckers can still see you. They could say, damn, Alex did the most before he went out, right? And that's goals right there. My, my ending point becomes someone else's starting point. Even if my peak was like eight feet above that, right? Because I, I fall or whatever metaphor you want to use. Even if my peak was higher than where I ended, I don't want to fall all the way down to the bottom and still be alive. Because that's utter failure you might as well knock yourself off <laughs> you might as well you might as well though i mean it's never worth it right because humans are some resilient motherfuckers and they can come back from zero they can they can't come back from negatives that's almost impossible almost impossible but again humans are resilient people P humans are resilient entities and uh, they can come back from some fucking heavy l's from severe losses and in setting yourself up for success it just means doing a little bit better every day it just means doing a little bit better every day and you're setting yourself up <clears throat> you want to put yourself in a position where your last move is the best move right not, not even the best move because if i have my sights Set on somebody else. If I have my sights to start where somebody else is, where somebody else stopped, you feel me? Hold on. <clears throat> Don't fucking say you feel me. <laughs> if I have my starting point set where someone else got knocked off, right? At where their end was, my climb is necessarily going to be every bit as hard as when they were getting shot at as when they were getting as when they were in the sights of somebody else so i'm already setting myself up i'm setting myself up to get knocked off right that's man it got good right now that's the point of self sabotage means you're undertaking you are undertaking someone else's mission you are you're undertaking the mission that has gotten many others knocked off and you're just you're just carrying the flag for a, a little bit further that's all you're just carrying the flag a little further i'm a fucking nobody i'm a nobody 
All I'm doing is carrying the flag. That's it. That's it. I'm a corporate cowboy. I'm nameless. I'm faceless. I'm a nobody. And this nobody, <laughs> this nobody can sneak into, not sneak, this nobody can walk into any organization, shake anybody's hand, knock any motherfucker off, not give a shit, all the while setting themselves up, you know, to get spotlighted and sniped, potentially. <laughs> But what, you don't think I'm taking pot shots? Fuck yes. You don't think my associates t take pot shots? Of course they do. It comes with the territory. It comes with the territory of covering ground. That's how opportunities work. <clears throat> you see them, you have to take them. You can't hesitate. When you see them, you take them. You can't hesitate. And um, I hope, I pray, I plan that I don't become anybody's, I don't become anybody's opportunity, right? But in this operation of the first half of self-sabotage, I'm taking advantage of any opportunity that comes my way. And in doing so, I look... I might look like an attractive coattail to be riding on. Keep in mind that coattails don't have to be moving. Coattails don't have to be living. I don't have to be alive to, to, to have my reputation, to have my wave surfed on. You feel me? Fucking stop saying. <laughs> you feel me? <clears throat> Professionally speaking, I don't have to be alive to have this wave of mine, whatever wave it is I'm creating, whatever wave it is corporate cowboys stir up, it could get surfed with or without us. All corporate cowboys do is highlight the fact that the wave is a wave and they set themselves up. If they get caught surfing, it's like inspiring it's hold on this is a mental exercise it's the difference between it's the subtlety between inspiring others to do better and just making people jealous it's fucking fuckers who who can't surf who can't surf right who cannot surf. I should probably stop using contractions on a recording if if I'm going to be distributing it. If I'm going to be distributing it and contractions are harder to make out in an audio recording. So motherfuckers who cannot surf are the ones who become jealous and that's when the latter half of self-sabotage takes effect. The first half is you, yourself, doing the work, getting your name out there, getting that reputation, setting yourself up for success, slash self-sabotaging yourself. <laughs> and the latter half is logical. It's chronological. It's what you're avoiding actively. It's what you are... It's what you are taking measures to prevent. Ultimately, nobody wants to die. I don't want to die. Why do you think I carry tools and weapons? It's to keep myself from dying. <laughs> so the first half of self-sabotage is what I enjoy the most. You don't think I'm going to extend and, and take complete pleasure and enjoyment out of the first half of self-sabotage it's what i love doing it's it's i love going out there shaking hands uh, shaking egos and then the latter half is what i'm looking to prevent it's what i'm looking to extend is is the peak at, at which i'm gonna go out on the <laughs> God damn, this sounds wild. The peak at which I'm going to go out on, I'm pushing it. 
I'm pushing it. I don't, I don't want there to ever be a peak. And ultimately that comes back to the theme of being second place. I don't want to be the best. I want to be better. If folks see me wanting to be better, I mean, hopefully they don't catch me in a snapshot of being the best. Why? Because that's a fucking target on Alex's back. One, one, he has no say in who or what decides that they got to move in, that they have to step in. You know what I mean? It, death, <laughs> you, could, you could catch death off guard and they turn around and you're looking your best. You're looking your finest and death rolls around and says, you know what? It's time to fucking go. Not me. I'm, I'm striving actively to never be the best. You know, try not to boast, but obviously you want to be confident and assertive in what you can produce and what your results, what, what the outcomes and results that you can produce. This is all in a, in a corporate context. How do I tie it back to corporate real quick? Because, I mean, this is just general life experience, but in the context of corporate, how do you set yourself up for success? You might be asking, well, it comes with work. How much do you enjoy the work? Me, personally, I love the work. Why? Because the more responsibility I take on, and you necessarily have to take on responsibility in order to move up in an organization. Some motherfuckers, they pawn off the responsibility. They, dele they delegate their duties. They delegate their responsibilities. And then <laughs> they just become a manager who doesn't know shit, who has to depend on somebody else. Those motherfuckers are on the latter half of self-sabotage. They've made it into a management position and they're dropping fast. They just don't see it yet. I mean, the drop isn't immediate. You get capped in the back of the head. Time stops for you. <laughs> you get, you get capped. Time fucking stops for you and you drop, but you don't see yourself dropping. Others around you see yourself dropping. The motherfucker who pulled the trigger named Alex, he sees you dropping. And that's my starting point. 